bring you greetings in Jesus' name. And um, I'm excited. I'm excited about God. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm excited about God today. And I'm glad to see you all here. And I'm glad I had uh, a friend of mine come and be with us today. All the way from the Reno Valley. God, give God a hand praise. Amen. To worship, amen, yes. with us. Yes. Now, if, 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 if Pastor Reggie can bring somebody to church, what am I saying? Mm. <laughs> you might as well bring them all. No, I'm joking. <laughs> and that will happen. <laughs> if Pastor Reggie can listen, uh, in, in the natural order of things, the shepherd looks after the sheep. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, uh, the, the sheep reproduce because the shepherd has provided an environment for growth. Yes. and nourishment. Amen? Amen? The shepherd provides protection and he provides growth and nourishment and then the sheep multiplies. Is that right? Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. 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 Now if you, went to a, if you went to a good restaurant and you like the food, what you, what you going to do when you go to work on Monday? Right. You're going to tell somebody, yeah. aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah. Those, those of you, you know, if you're, if you're dating or you have husbands and wife, you, you're going to take, take her to that restaurant that you like before, right? You gonna you gonna you gonna you gonna get it, take some home with you, huh? You yeah. can't eat it all. You gonna ask for a bag, right? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, and take it home. You can eat on it later. How about that? Amen. 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 So if you like what you see, if you don't, then pray. Okay. You said, "Well, bless that preacher to say something." Mm. I'm sitting up here and he giving me skills, skills huh. and potato chips. Huh. He said we have a Thanksgiving dinner and he broke out some skills and potato chips. I don't want none of that. Then bring on the meat and bring somebody. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody what God yes. did for you. Don't keep it a secret. Yes. We don't, we don't, it's not, we're not playing secret squirrel. Uh, you know, right. it, it shouldn't be a secret to your co-workers that you go to church. Mm. Amen. No. It shouldn't be a secret to your neighbors that you go to church. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Uh, are you ashamed of the gospel? No, no, I'm, not. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. No. Amen. And we're going to talk about some stuff today. Is that all right? Yes. Now, I also want you to know, and we're going to talk about the, the announcements later on, and we're going to have a Bible study. We're going to start a Bible study on Tuesday. This is going to be in the announcements. But I'm calling for this church to fast. Amen. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not asking you. I'm calling for a fast. Because, see, the Bible says these things only come by fast and prayer. Amen. And how many need some yokes broken? Amen. Come on, come on now. Amen. I need Amen. God to move. And, and, yes. And, and, and yes, when you fast, you get hungry. Yes, yes. you're supposed to. How are you, how are you doing? You're supposed to get hungry. It's killing the flesh. Right. Yeah. Amen. The fast is cutting off something that causes life. And you're cutting off food and water. Midnight to t midnight to four. Midnight Tuesday to four o'clock Tuesday. Amen. Set a time to fast, okay? Amen. 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 Put put your Bible in your lunch box. <laughs> and when you Amen. go to work, go into your car and eat some word. Amen. And guarantee you, the hungrier you get, the harder you'll pray. Hmm. It's amazing how that happens. Hmm. Wow. The hungrier you get, the, 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 the harder you'll pray. Yeah. And then come on Tuesday for some for something to happen. When Amen. you're praying, I want you to pray for the church and the will of God to be done in this place. Amen. Okay? Amen. I know we need our rent paid and we need all this stuff, but set all that aside. Okay? Set that aside for Tuesday and focus on the house of God, the things of God, and what can you do for the kingdom of God? Amen. We, we know we have a laundry list what we want God to do for us. Yes. Amen? Don't we? Yes. Well, we have a list. Well, yes. and God has a list, too. Yes. God has a list of what he wants us to do for him. So on Tuesday, on Tuesday, somebody say Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday midnight, Tuesday, I don't care if you go to bed early, you can go to bed early if you want to. You can stay up till 11.59 and eat. It doesn't matter to me. But, but, but it just it's just the obedience. Amen, somebody? Yes. And if you get hungry, you're supposed to be hungry. Yes. We're going to talk about that in detail as we have Bible study. You know, stomach start rumbling. Amen. Thank you. Say thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and get into the Word. Get into the closet. Amen. Pray from 12 to 4 p.m. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. From 12 to 4. Amen. 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 That means you're not on Facebook. Uh. You're talking on the phone. <laughs> and you're not telling anybody. Right. You're not telling any do this in secret. Yes. Take some mouthwash, put it in your mouth, and then spit it out. Don't eat the toothpaste. <laughs> Don't eat the toothpaste. Amen. Amen. And then pray for me. 
Yes. Pray for this church. Yes. Pray for the word and be here at 630 on the altar crying out to God and let's get into some word itself. Yes. Is that all right? Amen. Give God a hand of praise. Come on. Amen. Now we are in the word of God. We do have a word today, okay? We have a word. We have a word. And, and if you were turning your Bibles to Haggai chapter 1, Haggai chapter 1, that's in the Old Testament. And we're going to talk about something for a little while today. Are you praying for me? Yeah, amen. 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 Haggai chapter 1, and we're going to uh, start at verse number 4. If you could stand for the reading of the word. <laughs> and we're going to read a little bit, okay? We're going to read a little bit, and then we're going to take our fight from there, and, and we're going to see what God has for us today. Is that all right? How many know that God is speaking today? Yes. Yes. And God is speaking to you. He is speaking to me. Somebody said, I haven't heard from God. Well, God is always speaking. We just don't be listening. Mm. Amen. Amen. We just don't listen. God is speaking expressively today. So, Haggai chapter 1 and in verse 4, it says, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and the house, and this house my waste? Verse 5, now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Down verse number 8, he says, go up into the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Verse number 9, ye look for much. And lo, it comes to little. Mm. And when ye bring it home, I blew on it, said. Uh, why, said the Lord? Because my house, I don't have my glasses, okay. But my house that is waste, and ye run everyone, every man into his own house. Mm. My God. Mm. Look at verse number 12. And Zerubbabel, the son of Jethel, and Joshua, the son of Jodesh, the high priest, mm -hmm. and all the remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord, their God, and the words of Haggai, the prophet, as the Lord, their God, had sent him. And the people did fear the Lord. Amen. And the people Amen. did fear the Lord. And we're going to look at verse 14. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, and of, uh, and of Sethel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jodesh, and the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And it came, and they came and did the work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Amen. Now look at one more time. Look at one more time. One more time at verse number four. In verse number four. No, I'm sorry, verse number eight. Go up into the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father God, use me, O oh God, yes. Yes. as your vessel for this moment, for this hour, O oh God. Yes. O oh God, speak expressly to us, O oh God. Yes. What it is your will for us today. Father, we thank you. We yes. glorify you. We lift up the name of Jesus. Yes, and everybody said amen. amen. And as you take your seats, I want to speak from the subject for a few minutes this morning. If you build it, he will come. Yes. If you build it, he will come. Now, this is probably a familiar passage of scripture to, to all of us, but, and, but I, I, was, I did a little research, and I want to share something with you. Now, we're going to get a time when we go to uh, the tabernacle and, and look at all of its importance and all of its significance, but there's one thing in particular that I want to point out in building of the tabernacle, uh, the temple that Solomon began to build according to God, uh, the, the son of David, as he began to build. There's something very special in Second Chronicles uh, number, uh, chapter 3, verse number 8. 
Um, amen. And, and it said, well, actually, in verse number seven, it says, And he overlaid the house with beams and posts, and the walls thereof, and the doors thereof, with gold and graven cherubims on the walls. And verse eight says, And he made the most holy house. The length thereof was according to the breadth of the house, 27 cubits, and the breadth thereof of 20 cubits, and overlaid it with fine gold, amounting to 600, uh, 600 talents. Now, what does that mean? I was, oh, great. They put gold on the walls. Now, the gold that Solomon used to build the house of God come from a place called Pavarum. And this place where gold was very thin and they beat it with hammers and they would cut it into sheets as if it were like panels or wallpaper. Amen, somebody. Amen. And they would use it and it was a soft gold and they would use it into molds to make casts of different images and whatnot. The gold, and I was thinking about the gold, talking about the gold that was in the house of God. This was a beautiful place. I don't know if you've ever been, I've been to Europe, and I've been into the cathedrals that they were built there. Beautiful edifice. And it's changing my mind how I see the house of God. Now, he said 600 shackles of gold. Now, we're just going to talk about just the, the gold on the walls. Not the rubies, not the sapphires, not all that stuff, but the gold. And I did a little research, 600 shackles of gold. Do you realize how much that cost? 600, I did the math. I won't do the math because you may not get it. It's okay, you may get it, but I'm not good at math. But I did the math enough to figure out that 600 shekels of gold is worth about $4 billion. I'm talking about the walls of the house of God. On today's market, okay, let me say it again. I'm talking about just the walls. <laughs> In the house of the Most High God. I'm talking about the walls. I'm not talking about the Holy of Holies. I'm not talking about the Ark of the Covenant. I'm not talking about the cherubims. I'm talking about the walls. Somebody say the walls. Four billion dollars. Oh my God. My God. Mm. Where did they get the gold from to build the house of God but from the people? Yes. Amen. The house of God represented God's majesty and the wealth of the people. Yes. I'm getting excited about building the house of God. Yes. Because if I've got a thousand dollars to give mm. to the house of God, I got a couple G's already in the bank. Uh, amen. 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 If you're giving out of your substance, there's much more where that came from. Yes. Because God says the silver is mine and the gold is mine and it's glorious to him. Yes. If God's going to dwell in a place, he's going to dwell in a glorious yes. place. Amen. 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 So now, and when I think about the New Testament, and, and it brings a whole perspective of the master who had the servants, and he gave them a talent, remember? He gave each a talent, and he said, occupy till I come, and one person bared the talent. Mm. I, do you realize that one talent is worth over a half million dollars? Mm. Wow. I was wondering, why was the, the, the master so upset that the guy buried one talent? What's one talent? Well, if I gave you a half million dollars, I want you to go do something with it. Yeah. It was a big deal that the talent, somebody said, God, give me a talent. Just give me one talent. If you give me half, if you give me half a talent, if you give me half a talent, see you, you start thinking about the stuff that you will get. If you had a half a <laughs> That's just the walls. Huh. Okay. In the house of your God. Yes. Yes. How many know that God is still able? Yes. And He can show up in your situation. Yes. Yes. So the word of God back in Haggai, they were released from captivity from the Persian Babylonians. 
and they had went back to build their house after it was demolished. It was demolished because of their disobedience. Their homes was demolished because of their disobedience to God. They lost their jobs. They lost their income. They lost their homes. They lost their physical, economic status was changed because of their obedience to God. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, see, your obedience to God is directly, your, your wealth and prosperity in your home is directly tied to your obedience to God. Amen. Say that again. Amen. If you're struggling, check out your obedience department yes. to God. Yes. Are you going through problems? Are you going through situations? I get it. I got to take care of my kids. Well, in the Bible, in the book of Haggai, they didn't come back from being totally devastated by their enemies. But their enemies only came because they were disobedient to God in the first place. Amen. So God allowed them to go back home and then again to build and they be and then they receive opposition when they start to build the house of God. When they came back to build the temple that was destroyed, they laid the foundation, they did a good job, they started off well, but then they were forwarded with the enemy blocking the door. How many times, how many know that when you try to do something for God, there's always something. Right, right. right. Every time, it, it, see, all you have to do is think about doing something from yeah. God, and then the phone rings, or something comes in the mail, or somebody starts tripping, yeah. or starts talking about you. Yeah. And you haven't even right. done it, you just thought about doing it for God, and here comes the opposition. How many know what I'm talking about? That's the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. Position to push you to your destiny. Yes. You see, I achieved what I achieved in school and in basketball, not because of the people that said I could do it, but the people who said I couldn't do it. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to prove to you I can do it because you believe I can do it. I shall achieve. Yeah. 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 See, see, in order for an airplane yeah. to get off the ground, it yeah. has. It's holding it on the ground. But if you push through gravity and you set your attitude and your wings and you give it enough energy, you will get lift off. If you fix in your mind that for God you'll live and for God you'll die and nothing's going to stop you as the opposition pushes you, it's going to lift you. team on the field. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense, does it? Mm -hmm. does it? How do you know LeBron James is such a great basketball player? The opposition. How do you know that Kobe Bryant is a, such a great basketball player because of the opposition? Opposition. Yes. He's proven his talent and skill because of the opposition. How many will go, if I gave you tickets to a Lakers game, we all go to the Lakers game and nobody there but the Lakers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no team. Right. And what if there's a high school team playing against the Lakers? Will you want to sit there and watch it? Because there is no opposition. What makes your team great is they overcame the opposition. And the opposition is able to overtake them if the person fighting does not exercise all of his skill. So when you decide to do something for God, expect Opposition. Opposition. Amen. And the greater thing you want to do for God, expect a greater opposition. Yes. There's a difference of playing pre-games before season, and there's a whole different story at the playoffs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a whole different story at the World Series. It's, it's, it's a whole new game at the World Series. How many know God wants to take you to the World Series in the spirit? And the devil knows it, and he Position against you, but you were able to achieve what God has already said to achieve because you're more than a conqueror to Him in Christ Jesus. More than a conqueror. What does that mean? More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Okay, if you had a holy failure, Ali and Sphinx fighting, that's a fight. But now, if I got in the ring, with Ali. <laughs> okay. okay. I think I'm pretty bad, but I, I'm not that bad. Come on. I get in the ring with Ali. It's a it's a rap. It's a rap. See, see, Ali can fight Foreman and he can be a conqueror. But if I get into the ring with Ali, 
and knock him out. I'm 